Welcome to Bilbo Baskers. Today we are going to talk about a lot of topics like music, food. We're from Spain and we hope you enjoy the program. Thanks. First, Eder, Aitor and Paula are going to discuss different music genres. Then, I've heard that you both are interested in music. In which way are you related with it? I have been in uh, my first year of singing lessons, and you? Uh, me, I have uh, seven months playing the guitar, uh, because um, one friend inspired me to do it, and mm -hmm. uh, I like the rock and roll music. Like and are you interested in Yeah, I am. I've been doing songs for by two years or something like that, and now I start playing the piano. Oh, that's nice. Um, what is the reason that you are interested into music? Just because your friend inspired you? Uh, yes, wha that was... One of the reasons. That is one of the reasons, uh, but I like to... Uh, the the film, for example, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody of oh, Queen. I know it. Uh, Me too. Yes. And my father uh, loves that uh, type of music and I'm all the days uh, listening to, to it because like my it. father, yes. And me, I've always been interested in it, but I've never uh, had the chance or the time to Uh, go to um, some music lessons as piano or singing lessons mm -hmm. and the last year I, I started with it so <laughs> that's cool now uh, I was I've been thinking about it and it's like music to me in my life means a very important thing that it must be in all of us and it's deeply in myself it's part of what am I what I am right now, in this moment, and what does music mean in your lives? Yeah, it's a big part too, I think, uh, of all of us, because because music means a, um, another way to to express yourself. Yeah, to, hmm, I know what you're saying. I feel the same, yes. It's like, in you, what is the meaning of music to you? Um, for me, the music is an important uh, thing in my life because uh, I'm all the day listen, listening to, to it and makes me happy uh, and in the, in the bad moments uh, can help you so much. And you will understand because you play the guitar when you are playing some instrument like um, being conscious that you are making that music it's like a very good sensation yes yeah. yes it's satisfying yeah yes it is spain and ireland have different customs around food Iker and lucas are going to discuss the pros and cons of each country so lucas tell me what is your favorite spanish food the spanish omelette uh, could you tell me why because it's very tasty oh that, great Uh, what was your first impression uh, when you tried the Irish food? That in Spain we usually have uh, three plates, that is a starter, a main plate, and a dessert, and in Ireland they don't have the starter. Oh. Did you feel any difference on the timetable? Yes, there are a lot. For example, the Latin time, or if not the dinner, that it's much earlier. Uh, what about the meals? Um, in Spain, we eat a lot in the meals, but in Ireland, they usually eat a sandwich or something like that. And do you feel any difference in the food you eat in Ireland? Um, yes. In Ireland, they, they don't eat a lot of bread in the meals, and in Spain, we always have meat in the table. Is there any food or ingredients you like to add to the Irish food? Yes, 
I think that in Ireland they need more seafood and fishes. Of all the foods you've tried in, in Ireland, which is the one you like the most? We don't eat a lot of Irish uh, food, but the mo my favorite one was a hamburger that we made in the barbecue. In the time we have been in Ireland, we have done many activities. One of the ones we liked most was canoeing. For at least Irati, Paula and Iker will tell us how was the experience. I heard that you went to a canoeing trip some days ago. Irati, tell me about... We went on a canoeing trip last Friday and we thought that we were uh, going to travel in canoes, but some of us had kayaks. That sounds good. And Paula, tell me about the, the, equip, the equipment or the guide. Um, Charlie was our guide and he gave us some equipment to use. And for example, helmets, what shoes, and like that. You stayed a lot of time canoeing, didn't you? Uh, it's true, we spent some time canoeing, but the route it wasn't as long as the last year. Did you do something during the trip? Yes, we've done a competition, and it consists of going up a rapid with the canoe, and there were two winners, uh, Billy and Brian. During the trip, did you see anything else? Yes, we saw animals, uh, for example, ducks or birds, and around the trip we saw some plants too, and the plants uh, made the trip more peaceful. How long did you spend canoeing the last year? The last year we canoed like six hours one day, more or less, and uh, the other day, other four. And but this year? But this year we can do like two hours more or less. And for a lot of people, it uh, was better uh, this year because it was shorter. Are you tired of listening to the radio? Are you tired of not seeing the people that are talking? Don't worry anymore. With this amazing invention, you will stop looking like an idiot listening to the radio. Here we have your solution. 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 Go buy a TV. So, Paula, what is your favorite football team? My favorite football team is the Football Club Barcelona. And um, who is your favorite football player? My favorite football player is Messi, and he is a player who plays for Barcelona, and he's my idol. Um, what, why do you like football? Uh, I like football because it's very important in my life, and because I watch it with my dad and with all of my family. It's true that some things make me feel bad, but in other times, I feel very good. Um, when was the last time you saw a football match in a stadium? The last time that I saw a football match in a stadium was, I think, that in the 11th of February, and the match was in Barcelona versus Athletic, and I saw it in the San Mames Stadium. And it was a great experience, and I would like to repeat it. Okay. Now, Annie, uh, I think that you do gymnastics. Yes. Can I tell you some questions? Yes. Uh, what do you like about doing gymnastics? I like that it's a team sport, and that it involves a uh, lot of things that I like, such as uh, the control of the devices, and I also like it because when I have a bad day, it makes me forget about everything that happened. Uh, just dancing and being with my team. And um, that's it. When I arrive in that pavilion, I feel like 
a new person or another one. And since when do you practice it? I practice it with, since I was five or six years old. Um, that's it, almost uh, ten years because I'm 14. And I know that gymnastics has a varied uh, appliance. Which one is your favorite? My favorite appliance or device is the hula hoop um, because I think that is uh, difficult to manage. I like the device that are difficult because when you try something very hard uh, and finally you, you achieve it or you get it, uh, the sensation is great. And who is your favorite gymnast? Uh, I don't have just one, I have two. And they are sisters, they are called Dina and Arina Verina. Um, in my opinion, they are an example of masters in the technique, so I like them. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Anne and Paula. Acts of Moming by Doris Salcedo is currently exhibiting in the Inma Museum. Earlier today, our Robin reporter Paula was out and about asking, what do you think about the IMA exhibition? It was strange because Dori used organic material. I think that the installations of Dori Salcedo were strange, but with a beautiful message. At the beginning I thought that this was going to be boring, but later when we start seeing her pieces of art, I like them. Normally I don't like going to museums, but this exhibition made me feel a strange feeling and made me feel sorry for the victims. At first, I thought that it would be a little bit boring, but then when Ivy started uh, speaking, I enjoyed it, and I would like to repeat it. In my opinion, the exhibition is strange and beautiful at the same time, and I recommend to go with a guy because if you understand, it's going to be very sentimental. Uh, when I see that uh, sculptures and art uh, an art, uh, I thought that uh, was uh, strange and I feel weird and trapped and I don't know why. I think without the story of its sculpture we wouldn't understand anything and that's why I didn't like that much. But I like the idea she wanted to express but not the way she executed. When we went to the Imas Museum I thought that we were going to see traditional sculptures but the reality was very shocking because At the end, we saw uh, very abstract sculptures with very deep meanings, and it was very interesting at the end. At the beginning, it looked weird to me, but then when I understood the meaning of the works, uh, it, it uh, was nice. And I think it's important to emphasize with victims uh, who had suffered and died. I think that the exhibition is, is strange because when you listen to the names of art pieces and you see them, you don't understand. But then when the guide explains what it means, you get it and you feel sad for the victims. So this exhibition was a very impressive art collection. Uh, I don't know why, but maybe because the topic she was talking about, or maybe the way she represented. And I think that uh, this type of um, visits are very important because can encourage people to change the world. You know that one of the best things for a lot of people are video games. Iker and Benyat, tell us about that. Hi Benyat, I heard that you like video games, don't you? Yes, I do. I've played video games since I was a kid. What was your first video game? Um, when I was six years old, uh, I played uh, for my first time a video game, and it was uh, Wii Sports. I suppose that you have a favorite video game, so could you tell me about it? I, do, I don't really have a favorite game, but I usually enjoy playing uh, online shooters like, for example, Call of Duty. You play in only one platform or do you have one? I normally play on PS4 because it's where the rest of my friends play and I want to play with them. How much time do you play during the week? It depends in how busy I am because, for example, 
if I ha if have if I have a lot of exams in one week, I won't probably play anything. And how about on holiday? Um, in holiday, it depends in how much I want to play. I like the interview, so we could play to the week whenever you want. Have you ever thought that fish can get bored of getting wet? Have you ever thought that their feelings? Maybe they just want to get dry for a while, and we don't know it. If that is the problem, we have the remedy. A raincoat for fish. We have all the colors you can imagine, such as octopus orange, shanadu, chartreuse, and a lot of more. It is a very useful invention for them. Pray for wet fish to get some dry. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Aitor. Uh, hello, Yati. Um, we are going to talk about plastic, which is a very interesting topic nowadays. Uh, plastic is a, a global problem that affects all life in the earth. And I don't know why, but most of the people are doing nothing to solve this problem. And I am going to tell you what is the biggest problem, and it's that the big industries uh, use the cheapest plastic, and this plastic cannot be re uh, recycled. So this, pl this plastic uh, mostly ends up in the, earth, in the water. Yes, and um, what happens with these plastics? Mm, the sea carries all plastic too, and... Um, and to a specific point where everything accumulates. This is called a uh, gar, which is basically a plastic island. Nowadays, uh, they have signed all of France three times, but it is getting bigger because every day, every second, um, 200,000 kilos of plastic appear in the sea from every part of the world. Um, and that's why it is an inter international problem because even if you throw a plastic bottle in a Chinese beach, probably it's gonna end in one of the seven guys that are around the world. That sounds interesting. And what can we do to solve the problem? Uh, it is actually a big problem, but uh, we have the opportunity to solve the problem. And because all of us are creating this problem, we have the we have to make a solution together. The best way is the famous for Earth uh, recycle, reduce, uh, reuse, and recover. Uh, when we convert, so they have an, like an order, and the first one has to be reuse because uh, then we don't have to create uh, more plastic. Uh, then we have a uh, reduce, because if we reduce, we are not going to uh, create more plastic that is going to end up in the sea. And the last one is recycle. So we can, uh, is, this is the last one because we have to create more plastic to uh, recycle it. So that's, what, uh, that's the things we can do to solve this problem. Thanks, Sandra and Aitor, for warning us all about what is happening with the plastics. And thanks to everyone who is listening to this. We hope you like it. And until the next time. Go! Come on! Go, go, go! Oh.